You guys stick people in front of green screens, throw some special effects on there and call it a day. This could have stayed in the drafts, seriously. Hey guys, it's your girl Cameron and I'm back at it again with another video. And today we are going to be talking about what happened to music videos. Why aren't they getting as many views as they did before? Some of our biggest pop stars are debuting at low numbers for the first week, the first two weeks, comparatively to what pop stars and musicians were getting on YouTube years ago. Recently, a Twitter user pointed out some recent releases from major pop stars in the game from the likes of Dua Lipa, Ariana Grande, Miley Cyrus, Billie Eilish, all with pretty popular songs, starting at a pretty low debut, okay? Mind you, I understand that views accumulate over time, but I do think that there's something there at the very core of the decline of music videos, the decline of people consuming them, and I want to talk about each aspect of that argument. We're also going to go into a brief history of music video and the evolution. I think it's important to put that into context while we discuss something like this. Like, and also give me some reasons why you think music videos are declining, because I don't think that's a debatable fact. Now, what is debatable is why this is, and I think we all have our reasons. And hit that subscribe button down below if you'd like to see more commentary content like this. Thank you guys so much. We've made it to 6,000 subscribers. The Pop is Dead video has been going crazy. And I know a lot of you guys have subscribed to me from that video. So don't worry. I'm going to give the people what they want. I'm going to be filming a lot more pop culture commentary content just like this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. And without further ado, let's just get straight into the commentary. Let's go. Let's talk about the rise of music videos and its evolution. There's debatable history around the term there's debatable history around who's the first so comment down below if you guys have any contributions to that as decades move forward the popularity of tv programming and telecommunications took off right almost every american household middle class had some sort of television set and so not only did we start getting live performances of artists more excessively but some artists started to put their own spin on what we would now consider more of a modern like music video. Artists like the Beatles began filming promotional videos because they couldn't make it to every performance or appearance that was demanded of them. They were huge, globally huge. They decided to film themselves singing over their track in different locations, presenting a concept like style. And this was one of the first times that artists were putting concepts to the songs in the way that we know it. According to Rolling Stone, however, the very first mu modern music video is considered to be Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. Something like Bohemian Rhapsody was the impetus for record labels. Seeing how profitable it showed itself to be a legitimate way, a potential way to gain more revenue, to gain more fans. With the advent of MTV on August 1st, 1981, the mass demand for music videos were going to be fed. And it would change. It would change the trajectory of the music industry forever it was a 24-hour music video channel so day and night you would watch music videos all the way through and that was the only programming it did become a very powerful medium for artists a lot of artists felt like if i make mtv i made it so singers revolutionized becoming full-fledged performers singers dancers actors with or by way of music videos giving their fans more to latch onto. and we cannot talk about this history without discussing Michael Jackson. So the King of Pop MJ is heavily credited for revolutionizing music videos. So we can go pre-MTV era. In 1979, Michael Jackson released Don't Stop To Get Enough, the music video. The video was a major shift in the special effects industry and it birthed the era of the green screen. Now, if you watch this video back today, it don't look that good. It don't look that good. I know, I know what you're thinking, cause it don't. But for 1979, it was a moment. I wasn't there, but I heard it was a moment. So it shows the dedication that Michael had to visuals, right? Prior to them even being called music videos, prior to the MTV era. And then with his highly anticipated album, Thriller, 
Music videos for songs like Billie Jean in 1983 and Beat It in 1983 as well, when we talk about MTV's history, they were not fond of allowing black artists on air. I'm just floored by the fact that there's so many, so few black artists featured on it. Why is that? The only few black artists that one does see are on about 2.30 in the morning or, on, or to around 6. Very few are featured predominant, no. predominantly during the day. No. But there's a, there seem to be a lot of black artists making very good videos that I'm surprised aren't used on MTV. Well, of course, also we have to try and do what we think not only New York and Los Angeles will appreciate, but also uh, Poughkeepsie or Midwest, pick some town in the Midwest that will be scared to death by Prince, which we're playing, or a string of other black faces. That's and black very music. interesting. Since we're in New York, should PLJ play, uh, you know, uh, the Isley Brothers? Well, you and I might say, yeah, because we have grown up in an era when the Isley Brothers mean something to me. If you talk on the phones to these guys like I did when I was in radio, it's Well, scary. I'll tell you what it means. i tell you what maybe the Isley Brothers or Marvin Gaye means to a black 17-year-old. Ah. And surely he's part of America as well. No question. It? And Michael Jackson was a victim to this. So for him to be on MTV, for them to finally give him the chance, and not only that, but for him to have some of the most iconic music videos of all time, it's a W. We have to talk about Thriller. It changed music videos forever. So the 13-minute short film, music video, but short film, was released in 1983. It is more than just a video. It's a short film and quite a piece of art. Tell you what, it's a Friday night. I'm interested in just having some fun. Honestly, Michael said he was tired of y'all making bad music videos verbatim point blank period a lot of the videos i even use the word video because i like to think of it as a film which it is we're doing a short film a lot of them are so terrible and i want a thriller and beat it to be a stimulant for people to make better videos or short films i really did because i mean i love mtv watching it you know i think it's great but a lot of stuff i see i'm not so crazy about and the video aided in the iconicness of the song and etched Michael Jackson's legacy into pop culture forever off of a video, right? It elevated the song. What makes Thriller Thriller is the music video, part of it. And the storytelling was key. It changed the way music videos were created and the appetite that fans would have for them as well as the expectations. With his $900 million budget, this I believe was the highest um, costing music video produced at the time. Everybody took it up a notch, right? Artists were putting more value into their production, the amount of money they were spending on their videos, the amount of time and dedication, and we started to see more high quality music videos from our stars, from our icons. Now, a couple of iconic music videos that I have to mention for the MTV era. Uh, we got Bad, 1987, directed by Martin Scorsese, featuring Wesley Snipes. I actually met him before at a yacht party starstruck to say the least it was very west side story inspired with the dance sequences and martin scorsese even said the dance sequence alone took two and a half weeks to film the monitor made us all dancers and we're going to go back to this idea of effort we're going to talk about it because that's one of the reasons why I think videos aren't getting as much play. But the effort in that statement alone shows the dedication, the time, the passion for creating. And I think that lacks. That lacks a little bit. We have Smooth Criminal with 1988. We got some of the most iconic visuals of all time with the leaning. I mean, that is music video history. Director Colin Chilvers said, quote, I fixed their heels to the ground with a slot so that they were locked into it. So even the production, uh, directors, producers were coming up with unique ideas. And that's not to say that people like Michael did not take inspiration from Fred Astaire. West Side Story, we all take inspiration. So I'm not saying that like he was so original to the point where like he just thought of everything in his own mind. But... I think at this time, people were seeking for new ideas. I have to mention Black or White in 1991 had a major TV premiere. The video premiered simultaneously in 27 countries with an audience of 500 million viewers. The most ever for a music video. It premiered on MTV, BET, VH1, and Fox. So 500 million at one time 
music video history right there. We're talking about viewership directly. We have Madonna with Justify My Love. It was actually banned from MTV from the imagery due to its erotic nature. Themes of same sex relationships and visuals that made some people uncomfortable. But again, Madonna was breaking barriers by visual. Her being an icon comes from the images that went so well and made such a statement with her music. And now we're gonna start going a little closer to the 2000s. Britney Spears released Baby One More Time, and we all know the iconic schoolgirl outfit was actually meant to be a space theme. Her label wanted it to be like some outer space situation and she's like I don't think that's really going to resonate with my audience I want people to relate to me she was 16 at the time and I think she made honestly the genius decision and this is one of her most iconic looks right her most iconic songs paired with the video do you guys see what I'm trying to get at right now that videos played such a huge part in creating the icon making the star and making statements sometimes some songs weren't even all of that good but the music video paired with everything created a world for people it created an escape it was escapism at its finest and it worked so well for artists so let's talk about the rise of youtube as a music video medium the music industry did witness a decline in the early 90s so platforms like mtv had to shift their focus from just music programming to now reality tv so youtube came along in 2005, the music video industry would revive itself. There was a whole new audience of people waiting to watch and it was much more accessible. People had more liberty with their visuals, right? It's a lot less conservative. You're not following the airways rules, right? There's a lot of rules that come with putting content on TV. Now you have the internet, people can slightly get more creative. You can potentially reach a larger audience. And artists did just that. So let's talk about some iconic videos of, I would say, YouTube's golden eras for pop stars and musicians. These are in no particular order, but if you know, you know. We have Gangnam Style by Psy with 5 billion views. Single Ladies with 951 million views. Hello, Adele with 3.1 billion. Bad Romance by Gaga with 1.7 billion. Baby by Justin Bieber with... 3 billion views. Katy Perry Fireworks, as of 2024, 1.4 billion views. Break Free by Ariana Grande, 1.1 billion. Nicki Minaj, 1.1 billion views. I think she did such an excellent job with capturing the formula that old, older icons used to use here, right? She took outrage, she took an image that really wasn't presented in the mainstream in that way at the time and it blew up it's a staple in her career um hotline bling in 2015 with 1.9 billion views catchy dance comes through again we have taylor swift with shake it off with 3.3 billion views despacito with 8.3 billion waka waka by shakira 3.81 billion and humble by kendrick lamar i wanted to throw another rap artist out there with 945 million views mind you these are all based off of 2024 stats. So if you look at a chart of the highest viewed videos, none are within the last four years, right? All of them are within that golden era of YouTube, most in the mid 2010s. And obviously viewership has probably dropped from YouTube within that time. And we're gonna talk about some factors. I'm not just saying that it's all because music sucks, don't worry. In the past four years, we have some really big hit. We're going to give some people some credit. We had WAP with a whopping 520 million views. Controversy absolutely drove views. I think this was one of Cardi's moments where the video totally accentuated and skyrocketed the song. Old Town Road by Lil Nas X, 1.3 billion views. Call Me By My Name, 561 million. This obviously was a controversy to be seen. I don't know if the song was that good. But the music video was talking about something. So again, a good video, a interesting video does something for a song. It just, it simply does. Driver's License by Olivia Rodrigo with 499 million views. Positions by Ariana Grande with 555 million. 
Thank You Next by Ariana Grande with $795 million. But we're going to start seeing them go down within the last year or two. We have Bongos by Cardi B with $43 million. Big Energy by Lotto with $55 million. Get Him Back, Olivia Rodrigo with $27 million. Vampire by Olivia Rodrigo, $85 million. And so on. Now, these are a lot of views. Okay? Tons. Millions. It's huge. But simultaneously, some of these songs that I'm, I'm, I'm discussing, like Vampire or Big Energy, I don't know if Bongos was as big, but they're getting radio play. They're getting rotation. People are talking about it on social media. They have fans. So you wonder, why is it that some of these videos aren't getting viewed like they used to? And I have to get add a node for K-pop in here because not every industry is lacking. Uh, K-pop is blowing it out of the water when it comes to visuals. A lot of K-pop group videos are clearing the 100 million mark easy. So I want to put that in there. Like, I'm primarily focusing on American music and American media. And now, this brings us full circle back to that initial post. Some of the icons that we knew and loved who were charting, I mean, their videos were blowing up in the mid-2010s and thrived with video view count aren't receiving nearly the same amount of views or interaction on their videos. So let's talk about this post, right? So we had Dua Lipa with debut at 12.6 million. We have Vampire with 12 million. Um, 7 million for Yes And by Ariana Grande. 5.4 million as a debut for Taylor Swift. 5.2 million for Miley Cyrus as a debut. And we have What Was I Made For at 4.2 million views. And if you go and look at YouTube right now, if you want to pause the video, look up each each stat. Some of these are newer than others, like Ariana's song. Check out my reaction, right? Like she just dropped it. But it was the first time she's released in four years. So under this thread, I mean, there's tons of people saying like, what happened? Why does it seem like these views aren't picking up in the first 24 hours, the first day, two, week, right? It's not catching on like it was before. And even we talked about Karma on the list debuted at 5.4 million for Taylor Swift and Ice Spice. Today in 2024, at the time of this video, it has 49 million views. Still a lot, but that's Taylor freaking Swift, okay? So... I want to talk about, we're going to get into why there's been a decline in the growth of music video viewerships. Let's get into it. First argument, videos aren't as good or dynamic as they used to be. Storytelling is lacking and visuals are very lackluster. So I think in the mainstream with this point, I don't know if I fully agree with it, but I do think that there is a missing saison with a lot of these videos, right? They're predictable, they may lack storylines, and if they do have storylines, they're not well thought out. I think they're la less creative. If we talk about um, a lot of these videos feeding off of concepts, literally being a part two to some of these iconic videos, um, a lot of stuff is done based off nostalgia or simply recreating basic concepts and remixing them. As an example, I love Ariana Grande. I reacted to her new song. I actually really loved her music video. But I think what's what's creating a lack of hype around the song and the video is that because they played so much close homage to Paula Abdul, Cold Hearted, and Madonna, just the song itself, I think a lot of people are like, it's nothing I've, I haven't seen before. I think her dancing was excellent. I thought she looked very light on her feet. Very nice lines. Don't get me wrong. Artistically, I think she did an awesome job. But it's really nothing we haven't seen. And I don't think people are running to the internet anymore to see stuff that doesn't feel super original or feels regurgitated because I've seen that video 10 times, right? And I'm not just saying this about her, but I was using that as an example. Music videos also aren't accentuating the songs, not supplementing them or working in unison. So you either got artists, gorgeous girls. Great gowns, beautiful gowns. Sitting, looking cute for a music video. Love that for you. But the message don't be coinciding with the song. Y'all be wanting to be cute all the damn time. Y'all ain't talking about nothing for real. You guys aren't showing anybody anything for real. And no one really is going to truly tune in because it's like, I'm listening to this. 
other than your stance. Like, let's talk about that. Before, I felt like everybody was low-key watching videos, but I think stands tune in. I don't think everybody's like, oh, she just posted a new video. Let me go see what they're talking about. No. For instance, Drake's latest video, You Broke My Heart, it now has 6.9 million views. What the, what was that? What was that? I, I don't understand the correlation of these two girls singing the song while they blow Drake up in a car. I'm looking at two girls lip syncing they can't even say the n-word they can't even say they can't even really rap the, the lyrics i'm like where where was this going right it's stuff like that where when i was watching i was actively like this could have stayed in the drafts seriously another thing that goes into this overarching point is not being released at the same time as the single i think when you know your song might not be that strong you have to release it together you can't let it, you can't give it time to breathe. Lower budget videos, okay? Labels are not investing the same amount of money, um, time, and resources into artists that they did before. With the production value and the qualities, you guys stick people in front of green screens, throw some special effects on there, and call it a day. Instead of actually scouting locations, creating live props. Y'all want to CGI everything. There's no depth, there's no dimension. And a lot of that has to do with funding. I'm not blaming y'all because some of y'all, I'm sure labels are being very like they're, they're skimping out. I believe it. But it's it's undeniable. Normani, for her Wild Side video, talked about how she had to fund her own money for that video. The label helped with some, but in order for her to get it to where it needed to be, she said, I'm going to take money out of my pocket and put towards this. What was the budget? I'm not going to lie. I, um... There's a lot that I had to, I had to. You had to put up some money for it. Invest my own. That's right. Invest. Yeah, the music invest. video alone. But I, I believe in. So what it's I'm over doing a million dollar invest. budget, huh? That's crazy. Definitely. <laughs> wow. I mean, the number that I put in would probably be, it would probably sound foolish yeah, 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 yeah. to a lot of people, but I, I definitely know that it was well worth it. Yeah. And when I have a vision, when God places a vision at, like on my heart, right, 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 right. I'm like, this is the assignment. That's and that video is single-handedly one of the best music videos that came out this decade and that year. It was a moment. So it shows when you really dedicate and you care. And she luckily had the resources to do that. People are going to be receptive. Kind of moving on from the performance part or the visuals. There's just simply a decrease of attention span. Short form content like TikToks and Reels have possibly contributed to people being less likely or able to sit down, which means people are not going to tune in to short films anymore either. According to Treetop Abba Therapy, the average attention span is now 8.25 seconds, which can be affected by factors such as age, environment, and the type of activity. In 2000, it was on average of 12 seconds, so we have a decrease of 33% today. We have the attention span of a goldfish. And that's not to sit here and say that people aren't watching stuff, right? But on average, trust me, I look at my analytics and it's very hard to retain attention past the three minute mark. It's less likely statistically for people to pay attention. Advertisements on music videos. I saw this in the comments a lot when I was doing research, um, but many YouTube videos are plagued with ads. By the time you're ready to watch the video, You've had to watch almost a minute of ads. And I've been noticing that a lot more. So one of the most practical reasons to me why this is an issue, pay attention, pay attention, is people mainly consume music through streaming apps. When there are a large demographic of your audience that don't even really consume music through YouTube, like that's not the primary source that you run to, you're just simply not going to get as many views on this direct platform because it's not reaching certain audiences. Besides clips on Twitter, and maybe if they take time to view an Apple Music, some people are just simply not going to watch the visual. YouTube also was the only way to listen to music for free. But people were more likely to consume music through replaying the video on YouTube because that was one of the only options or a main option. And it just it, it paired very well together. People don't need to do that anymore. I know a lot of people have said once Spotify starts streaming music videos, it's over. But without YouTube, I mean, television stations, cable is not that popular anymore. So you can't really go back to relying on cable to debut music videos. Now you got to figure out what platform is going to get it into the eyes of the most people. 
and it could be Spotify, it could be Apple Music. YouTube tends to favor longer form content, watch time, right? It's more ad revenue. And music videos are so short, I don't think that YouTube is, is, is really promoting them in the same way that they used to. And last but not least, other genres of music have raised the bar, aka Afrobeats, reggaeton, Latin pop, K-pop, J-pop, especially for the K-pop category. High budgets are extended. Artists are polished and pristine. And people are invested. The creativity is there. Sometimes. I, I do be seeing some K-pop artists just kind of jack. Some style. But don't we all? The creativity, um, the futurism, the budget. I mean, the amount of money that these these labels are putting into these K-pop idols. And these people work for it their whole entire lives. The effort is shown. And it's there and people are resonating with it. Don't count out other markets because other markets are probably having their biggest boom. And the very last point, redundant, but celebrity culture has shifted. People are no longer as invested in people's art as they are the gossip, the drama, the scandal. People aren't tuning in to music hardly, let alone to sit down for three, four minutes and watch a video. So with all of that being said, I think a lot of these reasons contribute to the, the, the decline in music video viewership. I enjoy music videos. I, I, I place so much value and stock in them. I know it's not important for everybody, right? But I, I look at production value. I look at costuming. I look at the fashion. I look at the dancing. And how they all work in unison. And a lot of the times it really accentuates the song. So personally, it's disappointing for me. Like it sucks a little bit. But it's a new day and age, right? Time moves on. Things change. But I wanted to talk about and add the evolution of music videos into this conversation to put into context how important videos were. And I, it could contribute to, to why, like I said, pop is dead in my last video. Because the whole package ain't there. And that includes the music videos. That includes the visuals. So thanks for coming to my TED Talk because this is a long video. But you made it to the end. Like, comment down below. Please contribute to the conversation. I will be responding to as many people as I can in the comments. Let's chat. Let's talk. But keep it cute. Super cute. And hit that subscribe button down below. We're going to be on the road to 10K this year. Okay? Road to 10K, that's our new slogan, new hashtag. Let's get it. Check out my new videos. I appreciate y'all for watching. And I'm going to see you in my next one. Signing out.